this video, we're going to talk about what IP, intellectual property, uh, trademarks, copyrights, patents, trade secrets, uh, what they are, how your rights uh, are, uh, uh, what kind of rights you have, uh, what kind of things you can and can't copyright. Um, and, you know, so specifically in the United States, our Constitution mentions that there is a uh, mechanism to limit uh, the rights of people who are inventing or uh, limit the rights of others uh, from uh, from taking or stealing your work um, uh, from and copying it or using it and without giving you money. Uh, specifically, these are usually, you know, back in this time period, it was a lot of uh, a lot of uh, applications towards like equipment and there still is today. Um, patents are issued for equipment, um, uh, you know, uh, hardware um, and, and also novel software um, uh, innovations as well. Um, but uh, this is something that is a right for everyone. Um, and this is something that is uh, uh, really important to the kind of evolution of, and you know, I, I'm not saying that patents were uh, first started in the United States for sure, but um, the patent system and the ability to give exclusive rights to exploit an idea uh, was really important in order to start allowing for people to invent things and then for those inventions to be shared with other people, but also to um, uh, allow people to reap uh, some really strong rewards for being the first to invent something. So this is kind of, you know, a uh, a, a, a mechanism for people to uh, develop new ideas. Um, it's a kind of entrepreneurship um, uh, uh, co article. So um, let's talk about copyright first. Uh, you don't have to register a copyright in order for you to have copyright over things, but it does make disputing copyright easier. Um, copyright applies when it's in a fixed form. Um, so what fixed means is it's not going to change. So lot check, right? Uh, when you send the game off to the CD manufacturer, uh, um, that's when uh, uh, it becomes fixed. So that's copyrightable. Uh, when you finish a manuscript, each manuscript is a different copyright. Um, so uh, you know you want to take a look at copyright.gov for sure. But um, generally, um, copyright lasts for a really long time, uh, 95 years from the first publication or 120 years from creation or the author's life plus 70 years, whichever is shorter. Uh, so this is something that we've been celebrating lately in the last year or two. Uh, a lot of uh, things have come into the public domain. I'm not gonna talk about the, the reasons why that's in, a, uh, in your uh, request for proposals video, um, uh, but, um, uh, I will I'll link it down below. But uh, it basically, uh, it, it is a very long term protection. So if you write a story, you're going to be able to, you know, so for instance, Tolkien, when he wrote it, um, he is able to use uh, uh, and exploit his own works for a very, very copyright. One thing to note is copyright doesn't apply to game mechanics. So like cloning a game being like a Tetris clone or whatever, it's okay. Um, it doesn't protect uh, uh, that. So when you see clones out there, you think, oh, I thought I copyright uh, it was copywritten. So no one can copyright randomized dice or, you know, something like that. The, those are kind of the building blocks and mechanics of games. Um, and we're going to talk about a couple exceptions of things that have been exclusive. But um, but those basic building blocks are really is something that everyone shares. No one can. Uh, really copyright that and they can't copyright the combination of things. Now, there have been some cases where there have been some accusations that everything was cloned, including the uh, balance of the game. So like how much money you get and those kind of things. And I think the um, uh, the argument was is that those were, um, you know, fixed medium expressions. Uh, of, um, uh, so they are not the mechanics, um, but they're the actual balance of the game. But, you know, that that's all up to lawyers to kind of argue out in court. So a patent. So in the United States, there are tw uh, uh, patents are for 20 years um, from filing. Um, uh, it gives you the exclusive rights to an idea or an invention for a period of time. Um, it is extremely strong protection uh, and is a, a valuable thing to own. A lot of companies will buy out other companies specifically to buy the patents that they have uh, created. Um, and trading is a thing as well. There's lots of really interesting things, but it's a really exclusive right. But it's only it only applies to like real to new things, new inventions. So like 
you know, those ketchup packets that uh, open easily, right? The, so someone invented the ketchup packet and then had exclusive rights to make ketchup packets in that way for 20 years. Um, you know, those bread clips that are on, uh, 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 you know, a, a bag of bread, uh, that is a patented object, um, or at least it was uh, when it was invented and allowed people to bind bread together and allowed them to corner the market on that. Um, so there's a couple uh, patent si uh, situations in the video game industry. They're very few, so I thought I'd point some of them up. Um, so in uh, uh, this patent is uh, a, a patent for a quest uh, marker that points towards a location uh, um, and is for a car game. Now this is for a Crazy Taxi. Uh, this was the you know this this was the patent that went in and it is a, a patent uh, in the database. Uh, later on, um, Se uh, Sega sued EA Fox when they made their uh, um, uh, driving car case uh, uh, when they made uh, the Simpsons driving game, um, which had the exact same feature. Um, later on, they settled. We don't know for what or what happened, but both of uh, but Sega sued. Um, and then they discussed behind closed doors and came to an agreement, probably for money or trade for something else. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do to negotiate. Um, all right, so uh, you, uh, this patent, uh, this is for the, the Dynasty Warriors series of games. So the battle method with attack power based on character group density. Um, so this is, I, I think, a really interesting and weird one, but that, that's, the, that's the patent. Uh, so you can't make things based on uh, character group density with battle method attacks. You know, it's, it's pretty specific, right, to what they're doing. And that's kind of part of it is that patents are very, very specific um, uh, of what they do. Uh, there is uh, another uh, pr uh, project for, for a motion controller. Um, uh, Interlink Electronics had a patent out. They, I think they made the, their first one in like 97. Uh, in 2006, uh, Nintendo was sued by Interlink Electronics for uh, patent right infringement for the Wii uh, controller um, and for loss of reasonable royalties, reduced sales. Um, that was the, the claim on the suit. Um, and then Interlink, the company that sued Nintendo, dismissed the uh, case in 2007, probably after settling uh, um, uh, with them. Another one, and this one I think is actually expired now, but uh, mini games during loading scenes, um, that was for a long time an exclusive right to Namco. So anytime you had a mini game, um, and you know, I could be wrong as to the reasons why in Mass Effect, in Mass Effect 1, the elevators, um, you weren't allowed to control anything, but maybe they consider that a video game. Uh, you know, like you, you weren't allowed to control uh, your character. It just uh, kind of got uh, kind of locked into one position in the elevator. So there was no interactivity because um, maybe those were probably considered loading screens. I, I'm, I'm just inferring I could be wrong. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, for a long time, you weren't allowed to do that, which is really weird to think, right? So patent trolls, um, this is a, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of a, a, uh, a term we use when we're talking about people who are trying to, uh, or who own patents that might be more broad than they should have been when they're created. Not all patents are created equal, and sometimes the patent office issues things that aren't exactly uh, fair to everyone. Um, and what they do is they usually try to, you know, bully you into giving a small settlement out. So I think I remember a, a case of like um, uh, a, a patent troll um, saying that uh, um, if you had a printer that they were going to sue you for patent infringement, um, uh, you know, it was, it was trying to enforce it uh, against small companies. Um, so there's a lot of times where people might tr uh, try to use patents to uh, kind of extort money uh, from people or, uh, you know, but they're also not interested in actually making that product like they own it, but they only own it to bully other people into paying them money. Um, so those people are out there. Um, uh, be careful and also don't get too, um, too upset if someone comes after you in a professional way. I mean, like these people will not come in a professional way, but it'll come through your business. Um, so these people are out there and this this happens. So trade secrets, that's another thing. Um, a trade secret is something that lasts forever. Um, and so like if you can keep it a secret, you're good. Um, and uh, a trade secret is uh, something that you can just keep secret forever. So like WD-40, Coke, um, the, the 
uh, uh, the mixture of how to make Coke. Um, those are, uh, those are long-term tr trade secrets. Uh, and, um, you know, sometimes that might be a better choice. It just depends on whether or not you can keep the, the sauce secret, right? Um, but once they're out, once the secret's out, you have no protection, it's gone. So if uh, WD-40's uh, formula got leaked, um, then it would be out to the public forever and ever because uh, they've been using it for a really long time. Uh, trademarks. So trademarks are something that this is uh, pretty useful for you. Um, they they can last forever as long as they're issued. Um, uh, you should register trade. You should register your trademarks that you use, um, and uh, you should use the trademarks that you register. Um, your the the things that you might register as name or a product name or a service, a logo, a slogan, um, anything that identifies your company's offerings. Okay. Um, so there was a story where Pax was having trouble with counterfeiters, um, and they were having trouble like they can't get the police to like arrest them for counterfeiting. No one, no one cares, right? Um, but, uh, what they could do is they got their lawyers to enforce, uh, uh, trademark infringement against these individuals, uh, and cease and desist them that way because they were infringing on their trademark. Um, and they, so they were just suing them <laughs> basically. Um, and that was a really interesting way to deal with counterfeiters. Um, there's also, uh, this, uh, person, Tim Langdell, uh, uh, there's a bunch of stories out there, uh, about, um, uh, him owning Edge Games, which was a trademark, and uh, he actually was uh, suing, he was very suit happy, um, and he would sue anyone basically with the word Edge in it. Um, uh, there is a, a Moby Games made a game uh, called Edge, uh, which uh, he forced to take the, uh, the iPhone store to take down. Um, so obviously, like, that's a big deal, right? And that's kind of one of the things trademarks can do is they can allow you to issue cease and desists to companies like Apple and Apple will be like, oh, I don't want any, I don't want anything to do with this. I'm going to, they can also go to the trademark registry and see that that's the case uh, and they can make a decision. Um, so it can really disrupt your business. Um, he also sued Mirror's Edge for making the game called Mirror's Edge. Uh, so he sued EA. Um, uh, eventually his, uh, eventually this became uh, obvious that this was like a trolling uh, uh, incident and they, uh, the government actually canceled his trademark. Uh, and there's a, that's the link to, to that. Um, so that was a really just really interesting case. But trademarks are really valuable. Um, and you should trademark things that are identifying you because um, uh, they can it can be really helpful in uh, in uh, protecting you in a small term way because, um, you know, like copyright and patent infringement like those like lawsuits and stuff take forever. But like if you have a trademark, that's that's a, a physical thing that you can use to enforce your own rights. Um, uh, also, just as a note, work of authorship. So it's my understanding that like code is a work of authorship. It's like a book. So when you write it down and when you're done with it, it is uh, um, uh, it is a thing. Uh, so that means that you shouldn't copy other people's code. Um, and you know, there's sometimes where it's just a method or whatever, right? So those aren't necessarily copywritten um, because there's only like a, you know, like on collision enter for Unity, right? That's not copywritten. Uh, that's just something that you use. But the way that the code is laid out, and that's that's kind of the way you wrote the book. Um, so uh, be careful when using other people's code, especially if you didn't buy it. Um, some are licensed for free. A lot of people give their code away, but you need to understand what it is that you need to do because otherwise it's copyright infringement and plagiarism. Uh, plagiarism is uh, uh, punished by uh, punished severely at you know universities. Copyright infringement um, is also something that could land you in hot water, um, uh, especially if it could be proven that you took it. So. With that, um, that's about all I wanted to cover uh, in terms of rights. Uh, but uh, if you have any questions, post them down below uh, and I will see you in class.